from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. We see all the Bible study people are here, so we just praise God. And we're just going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this is the day you have made. You say we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. Lord, we ask you to just come on in, God, and sit with us, God, as we study and read your word, God. We know that your word is true, and we each and every one of us need to know the word and hear the word and walk in the word. So come on in, God, and sit with us so that we meditate on your word day and night, and we thank and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So our lesson this evening will be lesson number six. The title of our lesson is Be Made Complete in Love. That word love, L-O-V-E, all right? That's an important word tonight. So the only way we can be made complete is when we have the love of God for each other. Christians demonstrate their love for God by loving one another. Now, if we say we love God, then we should show it by having love for one another. That's for you and for me and everybody. We got to have love. So I want to go to the book of Corinthians, chapter 1, or chapter 13. The whole book in chapter 13 is the book of love. And so it says, though I speak in tongues, but I have no love, it's just like a sounding symbol. It's just a whole bunch of noise because we know one day tongues will cease. Though I have gifts of prophecy and understand knowledge and I have faith and that I can move a mountain, but no love, says I'm nothing, because prophecy shall fail. And it also says, though I give to the poor, I give my body to be burned, but no love, prophecy mean nothing. Love never fails. And this is what love is. Love is kind. So we got to be kind to each other, right? Love is patient. You have to have patience with one another. And we're not only talking about with us, but we're talking with any and every one. Love does not envy. So you're not envy with people when you have love. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. So you ain't walking around proud, proud right? Because love is not proud. It does not dis honor others. So when we have love, we're not dishonoring each other. It is not self-seeking, so you're not seeking for things only for yourself. It's not easily anger where you're angry. It keeps no record of wrong. You know how a lot of people like to keep record of wrong, but not good? But it keeps no record of wrong. And it does not delight in evil. Love does not delight in evil, but the flip side, rejoice with truth. So love requires truth. It always protects. It always perseveres, making an effort to continue to keep going and on and on. But three remain, faith, hope, and love, and out of all three of them, the greatest is love. I thought about the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. And the first fruit, which is the number one fruit, is that word love, L-O-V-E. So that lets us know that it's important to God. And we as Believers, the body of Christ, we need to be bearing some fruit. So you ask yourself the question, are you bearing some fruit? And we know love is an action word, right? 
So you can't just talk about it because we know talk is cheap, but you got to be about it. There's a song that was sang years ago back in 1969 by Jackie Shannon. He, she wrote the song, we got to put a little love in our heart, but we as a people of God, we want to put a lot of love in our heart, right? And it says, think of the fellow man. So we got to think of our fellow man, which is each other and other people. And you got to lend a helping hand, if a helping hand is needed, right? So that way you're putting a little love, but we're going to change that little to a lot of love in your heart, right? And it says, it's getting late. And the time is getting late, right? As we live these days, they're going fast and fast, especially the older we get. I'm like, what year is it? What month is it? It's going fast, right? So that's why we got to put not a little, but a lot of love in our heart. And this world would be a better place, right? If we have love in our heart as people of God, the world would be a better place for you, me, and everybody else. So we got to put a little love in our heart. So the lesson tonight is coming um, by a writer whose name is John. John is an apostle. He wrote the gospel of John. He wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation. We also know he was one of the three, the inner circle of Jesus. Jesus had three important people in his life, and John was one of those three. So it was John, Peter, and James. And he was called the disciple Jesus loved. John used this phrase because he actually knew he was loved, that L-O-V-E, by the Lord. Who better to demonstrate and be the example of Christ-like love? So tonight in our lesson, we're going to cover the three topics. And our three topics will be, number one, love others as God loves us. 1 John 4, 7 through 12. The second, love is the distinctive, distinctive of God's people. 1 John 4, 13 through 18. And our third point will be walking in love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 through 21. Second John, verse 1, 4 through 6. And so we can get 1 John, verse 4, 7, 8 up on the screen. And I need that in King James, please. I think I wrote down the King James. So the first word we see here is be loved. Okay? That beloved is talking to us. All right? So let's just jump real quick to Romans 1 and 7 in King James, and then we'll go back to the 1 John 4 and 7. So it says, To all that be in Rome, be love of God, called to be saints. That's us, right? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So I told you, and it starts off by saying, beloved, it's talking about the body of Christ, us Christian people. So we'll go back to 7 and 8. So it said, let us love one another. Again, we need to love one another. For love is of God. God. Not of you, not of me, but of God, right? And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Verse 8. He that loveth not God, for he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And when I looked at that for God, those three words, God is love, I said, 
he sent, wait, wait, sent his son. So God is love, and then the three words is sent his son. And when I looked at that, I thought, because sometimes I used to see God is love, and I thought, what does that mean? But he sent his son, meaning he sent his son. And the way we know he loves us is because he sent his son to die for our sins. That's love. And I thought, wow, I think I've seen that. God is love. I'm thinking, I kept saying, God is love, God is love. But I thought, sent his son. That's love. He sent his son to die for our sins. And sometimes, you know, you look at God doing things and you say God's done this and God does that. And we get excited about what God has done for us. But when you think about the fact that he sent his son to die for us, that's important. Because the things that we think about how God, you know, loves us, and we say, oh, you know, I love God and God loves me. But when we know that God sent his son because he loves us means a whole lot. And you make, it makes you look at it totally different. Okay, verse 9. In this was manifest the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. So here John explains how true godly love is in a person's life is a sign of being born again. Because again, we're talking about the body of Christ, and we have to be born again to be in Christ, and Christ in us, right? Then it says, those who truly love God will act on that love towards others. So if you truly love God, and God's in you and you're in God, you're going to truly love um, God's people. Now, it has to be a true conversion, right? Because when it's a true conversion, we truly love God, and he belongs to to us. But those who don't demonstrate love have no fellowship with God. And I, that means, you know, there was no um, conversion. And I don't know who that is or who that isn't, but God knows, right? So love is something God showed us first. He showed us first love, not we showed him, because he first loved us by sending his son. So God showed us first by sending his son, Jesus Christ, the love he has for each and every one of us. Okay, we'll go ahead and read John 3, 14 and 15 in the King James. So go to 1 John 3, 14 and 15. Okay, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren, right? And so they're talking here about how we pass out of death into life like a resurrection because we love the brethren, our brothers and sisters. Because we love the brethren, he that loveth not his brother abide in death. Okay, 15. Whosoever hate his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So true love is true. love is a true test whether there has whether someone has experienced new birth or still in darkness of spiritual death. And so I thought have we passed the test of true love? And I thought about Cain and Abel. Now we know Cain was Abel and he killed his brother, Abel, right? And it wasn't, he was jealous of him, but really it was because Cain made a better sacrifice and he was obedient to what God told him to do when he told him to offer a sacrifice. But I thought, when we look around, we can't be jealous of each other, right? Because we don't know if you, you know, like, I'll just use example. 
Someone can be jealous of you because of the way you look or what you have. But we don't know what's going on in a person's life. I'll just even use someone who preaches. And you're looking at them like, oh, they can really preach. And then we look at them, we have a jealous in our heart. But we don't know what they went through and why God chose them to do what they done, right? All we got to know is what God has for us is for us, right? And we have no room to be jealous of anybody because jealousy can put us into not loving our brother. And how can you say you love your brother and you hate God, right? So we have to be careful and know that we are whoever God says we are. If you're a singer, you're a singer. If whatever you are, whatever gift God has for you is for you. What is for you is for you. But know that God has fearfully and wonderfully made you to be who you are. And we don't need to worry about nobody or be jealous and want to hurt anybody because we should show love to one another. Because we are our brother's keeper, right? All right, so now let's go to Ephesians 4, 1, and 3. And I think I said NIV. NIV, Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. So it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Verse 2. Be completely humble. We got to be humble, gentle. We got to be patient again, remember, with each other. Bearing one another in, there's that word again, love. L-O-V-E. So we want to um, make sure we put every effort in keeping the union of the spirit of the bond of peace. We want peace within our brothers and sisters, right? Because when we have peace, there's more love, right? And I thought um, the other day that God gives us people to love and family to love, because God is love. And sometimes there's people in our life that may not always love us, but when we have the people in our life that really love us, that's love. So love is very important. I went to the doctor the other day, and I was getting my physical. And um, my daughter's like, oh, Mom, you're getting older now. And so sometimes she calls me old lady. She said, old lady, you need to do this. You need to do that. So she said, when you go to the doctor, I'm going to be with you, which she did go once before. So this time she said, oh, I can't go. She said, but when you get there, put me on the phone. I'm going to talk to your doctor. So I was talking to the doctor, and she knew her from before, and I said, my daughter want to ask you a couple questions. So I put the speakerphone on, and she said, oh, I want you to run this test in my mind. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And at the end, I hung up, and I kind of felt, ah, she ain't my mom. I'm her mom. But the doctor said, that's good. And then my daughter said, I love my mom. She's the only mom I have. I want to make sure she's taken care of. That's love. So it's good to have people in our lives that love us. And I thought, man, we got kids that probably don't really love us, but we still got to love them anyhow. But to have somebody in your life that truly loves you makes a difference. So, okay, so now we're going to go to um, back to our scripture, 1 John 4 and 9. So it says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his son and only son into the world that we might live through him. So Romans 5, 8. It says, but God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we are yet sinners, he died. So while we are sinners... Messy, hot mess, doing everything we was big enough and bad enough to do. God died for us. Our past, present, and future sins. That's love. Okay? So now we're going to go back to our scriptures and read 1 John 4, 10, 11, and 12. This is love. Not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son 
as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Verse 11. I wanted that in the King James, though, but we'll keep going. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love him. Verse 12. No one has ever seen God. None of us have ever seen God. I don't think anybody's seen God in here anywhere else. You, do you think anybody's seen God? We've never seen God, right? But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete. So God lives in us, and we live in God. So his love is made complete. I thought about how in the garden, is this 12? That's, okay. No one has, okay. Uh, yeah, I want 12 King James. No, no man has ever seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfect in us. Okay, so we got it in King James. Okay, so I was thinking that in the garden, God made man, right, to live perfect for all eternity. He told Adam, the only thing you can't do is eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if you did, you would surely die. But the God we serve, as soon as Adam sinned, immediately... He didn't think twice. He didn't think the third or the fourth time. He set up a plan for redemption to bring us back in union with God. So he sent that second man, Adam, which his name is Jesus. Because we know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we know that we are saved by grace. God's a mere to favor given to undeserving people. We are saved by grace through faith, right? That no man can boast because we didn't do nothing about it. We didn't have anything to do with it. Salvation is free. You didn't do a thing for it. And John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, shall have eternal life, right? And that's, again, love. The love that God shows to you and me because he loves us so much that he sent his son. And again, when you think the fact that um, um, there's, there's, you know, um, when you get excited about something, and we think about how, you know, you're saying, yeah, I love the Lord because the Lord, the Lord gave me this, the Lord gave me that. A lot of things we talk about God, about what God has given us. And we get excited and get to talking about the goodness of the God. God is good and all the time God is good. And when I say that, sometimes I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about my, my, my house, my clothes, my, my job, my health. But God is good when he sent his son. That's the best good out of all them other goods. But you don't, you know, not, and that really hit me to say, man, God, you are good. Because by him sending his son, we have everlasting life forever. See, the things we can see now are temporary, but the things we cannot see are eternal. So we know that eyes have not seen ears have not heard what God has in store for us. And so when you think about salvation and then how he talks with, about he's going to wipe every tear from your eye. I don't know about you, but I mean, I've had many a tears. Sometimes I'm like, okay, this is good. This is good. That's good. That's good. But to think that one day you're going to live all eternity without end with the Lord is a good thing. We've never experienced it. So people get a little like, I don't know, I don't know. But I'll tell you, it's one or two. So you're going with them or you're going away from him. And to know that we're going to spend all eternity and I ain't got to worry about a whole lot of things makes me happy. I ain't got to worry about the kids. 
You ain't got to worry about the husbands. You ain't got to worry about the bills. It's going to be good. Very good. That's love. That's love. L-O-V-E. E-V-O-L, backwards, forwards, sideways, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. That's love. And to know we have something forward to look for makes me happy. God is love. That's the God we serve. The God of love that cares so much for you and me. That's love. So we'll go to our, back to our scriptures, and we're, gonna, we're going to the second part now. And it talks about love is the distinctive of God's people, 1 John 4, 13 through 8. And so love is the distinctive of God's people. And that word distinctive means having a quality or character that makes a person or thing different from others. There's a difference of people of God and people who don't know God. We are different because we have the spirit of God dwelling in us, which is the Holy Ghost, which makes us godly people who love people. There's something on the inside Working on the outside, right? And that's the Holy Ghost. So we thank God for the Holy Ghost. All right, we'll go back to our scripture, 1 John 4 and 13. Okay, so it says, Thereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because we have given us his spirit. And the spirit of God imparts, that word imparts means makes information known, communicate the will to love. So it's not us that has the will to love. It's the spirit that God has that gives us the spirit to love. All right. 1 John 14, 15, and 16. And we have, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the savior of the world. So we know he sent the son to be the savior of the world, and that's those who accept him as their Lord and Savior. He can be the savior of the world. Okay, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwell in him and he dwell in God. So we're going to have to confess that Jesus is God. So we're going to go to Romans 10 and 9, King James. And once we do this confession, then we know we belong to God. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, for if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. An easy thing to do. And salvation is free. There's not many things. I was talking to my son one day, and he was telling me about, Mom, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and it's free. And I said, Son, ain't too many things in life worthwhile having this free, because if you get it free, you're going to pay for it later. It ain't free. Even we got those um, um, COVID-19 shots. Some kind of way, somebody paid for them things. They weren't free, but that salvation we're talking about is free. Okay? And then we'll do, um, I think... Verse 16, we didn't do 16, did we? And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, again, and he that dwell in love dwell in him, and him, and God in him. So again, God is love. And when you look at that word, God is love, look at sent his son. So whoever lives in Love lives in God and God in them. Because if God is, if we're in God, that means God's in us, right? And so when we have that, that's a good thing. All right, so now let's go to our lesson, back to our scripture lesson, which is 1 John 4, 17 and 18. Herein is our love made perfect. 
that we may boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. 18. There is no fear in love. We don't have any fear in love if we know the Lord, but perfect love chastens fear. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a love and of a sound mind, because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. Because we have the love of Christ in us, believers gain the priceless assurance that we don't fear coming judgment. We ain't got to fear the coming judgment because we know where we're going, right? This is our assurance, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, right? If we love in this world as he does, believers need to not fear. Eternal rejection as a result of God's judgment. So we don't fear death, right? Because we know, again, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And we know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, right? And those people who don't know God, it's a fear. Because they don't know what the end's going to be like. But because we know God, we know what the end's going to be like. So we don't have any fear of the end. Again, like I said, the end is going to be good. We just don't know it yet because we haven't experienced it. Anything you're used to doing that you haven't done, it's a little bit of fear. But at the same time, you don't have a choice but two choices. And one is going to be good and one's going to be bad. But those who know God... Again, we know, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for them. And like I said, and as older and older as I get, I'm like, oh, Lord, I, I'm not in a hurry yet. But one day, hallelujah, this old body, when you get a little older, you can't bend right, you can't stand right, you go to bed, this be hurting. The young people, you don't know nothing about this. And then that be hurting. And then later on I say, I forgot that hurt. Now this hurt again. I said, oh, I forgot about that hurt. It's a, new, a different hurt. It done moved around in a circle. <laughs> and then I look at, you lose your hair, you're getting gray. And I look at some of these young people, I'm like, man, I, I didn't start losing my, getting gray in my hair. I was in my 50s. These people were gray in 30s. Time is changing. I look at LeBron James. I love LeBron James. I like LeBron James. Got a, got a big old ball spot in his head. He's been having it for years. He's 39. <laughs> man, I think I'm going to be happy when we get a brand new body. Right? You got to wear glasses. We got missing body parts, but we're going to be with the Lord. Everything's going to be new. We're going to get a brand new body. We're going to be dancing. We're going to be singing. We're going to be praising for the love of God. That is a good thing because the fact that we love God and that he loved us and he paid the price so we can live all eternity without end. It's never going to end, folks. Never, ever. But we ain't going to be in time. But who cares? It's going to be a party. <laughs> and in the world, I like to go to parties, but I'm going to be celebrating and dancing and praising with a different person. Because I change partners, but I'm going to go on, and all those who love the Lord is going on to be in a better place. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go to John Five and 24. So we're talking about eternal life. Verily, verily, he says it twice, that's a warning. I say unto you, he that hear my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life. See, that's talking about the believer, right? And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. We shall live again which is a good life, better than this life. We just haven't experienced it, but God said it so, and I believe it. Okay, we're going to our last and third topic, which is 
Walking in God's love. 1 John 4, 19, 21, 2 John 1, 4 through 6. And so we'll just read the 19th verse. So it says, we love him because he first loved us. Again, we loved him because he first loved us, right? Okay, then we'll read um, verse 20 and 21. If a man says, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. So you can't say you love God and hate your brother. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he's not seen, so you've never seen God, but you say, you love God, but hate your brother. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Verse 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who love God love his brother. So if you love God, you got to love your brother and your sister and everybody else, right? Right? So this is walking in love. Sometimes it might not be easy, but if we have God in us, we got to love our brothers and sisters, right? Because he loved us again while we were yet sinners. Now, if he can love us and we was just kicking it, partying, having us a good time. Well, I mean, when I was younger, I wasn't thinking about the Lord. I was having a good time. I said, Lord, I'm young. I'm having fun. I'll see you later. But I knew I really wanted to serve God. But to God be the glory, it wasn't, it came sooner than later. I gave my life to the Lord sooner than later. So to God be the glory, right? So if the love of God is in us, we must love like Christ. Because again, God is love. And we use those three words. God is love, sent his son, right? The love in us will be made known if we treat others or how we treat others. So we got to be careful how we treat other people because if the love of God's in us, we got to be careful. In relationships, sometimes with husbands and wives, one might treat one different or not. In their Christ, they're both Christian, but still... I say, just because you do what you do don't mean I got to do what I got to do, right? Because when we love each other, we still got to show love. It's not always easy, and that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Our kids sometimes act up. It's hard on the job. So in this lesson, it's talking about us as believers having the love of Christ, how we are towards each other, but actually, too, how we're towards other people. Because how do we draw people in? With love and kindness, right? So God wants us to show love to everybody. And again, like I said, the world would be a better place if we show love to one another. It's not always easy, but I said God don't ask us to do anything easy because anything easy anybody can do. But it's the Holy Ghost that leads and guides us, right? So we want to make God happy, and we want to obey him and obey his commandments, right? So if we love God, we'll keep his commandments. And I say falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever I've done. And I love the Lord, and I'm not perfect, but I want to try to strive to be more and more like Christ. So I want the love of Christ to shine in my life that others may see it and want to know God for themselves. So let's read Matthew 22, 37, and 39. And that's the King James. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord God with all your heart. Love the Lord God with all your heart. God looks on that. Um, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks, looks on our heart. That's why we got to love God with our heart. So it's a for real thing because he knows if you love him with all your heart because your heart is what God looks at. And with all thy soul and with all, their, with all thy might, mind. 38. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. That's the first and greatest commandment, to love the Lord God with all your heart, with your mind, and your soul. And 39, and the second is like unto it that thou shalt love thy neighbor as we love ourselves. And our neighbor means in and everybody, right? Your neighbor could be your neighbor next door. Your neighbor could be your cousin. Is anybody is your neighbor. So we're going to read 2 John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In the book it says 4, 6, or it says 2 John 1 and 5, but it's 1, 4, 5, and 6. So it says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thou children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. So we, we see John say he rejoiced greatly when he finds the children with us, us walking in truth, which is that love, right? Verse 5, and now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we again love one another. We keep hearing that word, love, love, love. Okay, and then the last and sixth verse. And this is love, that we walk after it, after his commandments. This is the commandment that we, this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, long time ago, we should walk in it. And that's walking in love. And our last scripture is John 14 and 15. If you love me, if you love me, if you love me, I love him. If you love me, we got to keep his commandment. And that's to love one another. So if we love the Lord, we got to love each other. And in this lesson, talks all about love. God is love. And because he's love, and because he's in us and we in him, he wants us to love. So if you don't get nothing else out of this lesson, know that God is love. And he wants us to show love to one another.